Hi everyone and welcome to uh, a little bit more chill of a tutorial than last week. Um, today we're going to take a look at uh, VS Code and I'm going to do a little bit of a stream of consciousness um, because it's really hard to break down all the things that VS Code can do and show it in a way that beginners understand. So I'm just going to go through what we see and what I believe is going to be the most likely questions you're going to have. Uh, and if you have any further questions, you can just drop them in Slack and I'll try to answer them or one of the teaching assistants will try to answer them uh, as good as possible. But remember, we're not using this, this course. This course is for you to get familiar with it. So the idea is that you play around and that you don't need to know everything right now, just so, this, so, that, just so that you've seen it once. So we're doing a little jump cut and having a teaching moment here. I just realized that uh, in this tutorial, I just straight up went into VS Code and I forgot to tell you to download it and install it. And this is the thing with people who teach programming. So this is kind of so that you understand where the teachers are going to come from in the future. Certain things such as having VS Code on your computer just seem so, um, you've just gotten so used to it that you don't even notice that somebody else would have to download it. Uh, this is super common. Uh, it happens all the time in, edu in this education that people are like, oh yeah, you need to download that thing. I've had it on my computer for 10 years, but you're just starting out. So go easy on them and just say, uh, speak up if there are any questions because it's gonna happen and it's fine. Nobody means anything bad by it. Um, uh, we, we just forget. So I want you to download uh, VS Code. I'm just gonna open a new window, go here. And we're going to go to VS Code. That's the one. Here we go. Download for Windows or Mac or, or Linux. Um, so here you can just download it. Um, I've already downloaded it. So uh, it's good for you to try to start downloading and installing things by yourself. So download this, follow the instructions. You don't need to do any specific uh, builds or um, configurations. Just go with the recommended. Uh, settings for now. Um, I've had to uninstall and reinstall VS Code a couple of times and um, I don't think that it, those specially configured things do that much unless unless you're a power user who've used it so much that you know um, the intricacies of it. So go ahead and download and install it and then continue with this tutorial. So we're gonna start by opening it and you can open it two different ways. You can click on the VS Code icon and as you can see, I am right now in the desktop. That is where VS Code opened. Um, and when if you see down here, you can see that it says terminal. Now, I've said that you can switch to different terminals in the uh, in VS Code, and I'm gonna show you what that means. So right here, we are on PowerShell. So this right here is exactly the same as if I opened this bad boy right here. It's just that it's it's it looks like it's over here. These are still two different um, PowerShells. So this one can do something and maybe have something um, that's loading in the background and this can work on something else at the same time. But right here, there's a little drop down, and you can open it with git bash. And this is probably familiar to you at this point. So once again here. Now we can use this as normal. So we're going to CD into the my code, which is going to be the example folder for today. CD my code. And it looks exactly the same as when you um, worked in Git Bash uh, before. So here you can navigate a bit more visually. This is everything that's on the desktop. And maybe that's not something that I want because this is kind of a bit overwhelming and difficult to navigate in. So this was just me clicking the VS Code icon. So now we're going to go into the folder that we want to open in VS Code 
and we're going to right click and open with code. And now, same thing, we're, we're still in the desktop my code thing folder, but we only have my code open here as our workspace. So this is what VS Code looks like. Down here you have a terminal. Uh, I've talked about debugging. I'm going to show you a really quick instance of debugging in another program a bit later on in another tutorial. Um, <clears throat> you can have some output problems. This is where you have errors and they show up. Um, but this is, the, this is how it looks. So here we navigate all the files, everything that's uh, contained within the project, and clicking on them opens them up. So this is what th the contents of my file is. And you can look at Markdown, you can look at text files, and of course you can create um, uh, files that have code in them. So uh, for JavaScript that would be .js. Now, probably your VS Code won't be working with .js because you need additional setup before you can run any code there. But my point is that that is how you create a file with code in it. You just go my first code file .js and now we have a JS uh, file. So to run it, and here we can start just typing anything. And don't worry about all of this. This is something I'm going to explain next week, what variables are, how to write them, and things like that. Um, um, let's see, here we go. And here you can see already the, the help that you can get from VS Code. Um, it's telling me that I can't just leave this blank. Uh, it's red and very, very clear that something's very, very wrong. <laughs> Uh, and here can be some other uh, help suggestions that you don't need to listen to necessarily, but it can be helpful to improve how you write. So you can remove the unused variable variable. So I'm stating something here, but I'm not using it. So here I can change this to this is what they're saying. If I can spell it correctly. There we go, and now that disappeared. So this is just one of many, 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 many things that VS Code helps you with when you do code. Um, you can also do things like split the terminal, so you have two different terminals up. You can do things like, let's see, where is that? Editor, split, and you can have two different editors. So you can have one file open here and one file open here, and all of this might seem not that useful right now, but trust me, when you have so many files and you need to compare them, these things are going to be a godsend. But okay, so this is the code space, so to speak. This is where you have the, here we can end this terminal, there we go. And here you have the files available to you in the project. So the three most important spaces. So let's take a look at this side panel, shall we? Over here, we have just to open and close this thing. Uh, the reason this is uh, lighted up is that it wants to save my file. So you can get even more width. Here, we can search for anything in all of these spaces. So we can look for maybe, let's see, there we go. And that search is every file you have and folder you have in uh, your workspace. So it's very, very useful. Now, I said that we can uh, use git here in VS Code, and I'm not going to initialize a repository, which is what you did when you um, wrote git in it. But I am going to show you that you can do that here. And once you've done that, you have a UI here that is really, really, really uh, easy to understand and visual. So all the files that you've changed pop up here. And this here lights up with an icon and says, these are the chain or you have three changes you to commit. Um, so this if if the terminal is a bit of a um, 
hard thing to understand because it's so abstract and and lacks visuals this can be a good complement to the visuals now the school and i encourage you to get comfortable with the terminal but this is a good way to um, compensate if that is not your strength yet here we have debugging uh, i'm going to show you how debugging looks in another program as i said but um, this is something you're going to be doing later on, but it's good to know that it's there. And extensions. So I've talked about that a little bit and there's, it can help you so much to have these in your, um, in your VS code. Um, usually people post the good ones, uh, when they start at your, uh, at school. So I'm not going to just rattle off a list of everything you need because the teachers will do that for me and maybe they have um, a better clue as to what you should get. But I am going to show you a little bit how it works. So my favorite thing to do is to make things cute. So I like to add themes to things because that makes my brain just work better. So this is an extension that just changes the UI. That's all it does. You install it and you can set it and it just changes everything. You can also change it to a bit softer. And there are so many of these. So truly just play around. Uh, I think it's Mono something, Monokai Pro, there we go. Professional themes and matching icons. And these have so many. Um, you can Google uh, extensions for UI if you want to. If you just want to start getting your feet wet when it comes to extensions, when it comes to um, being comfortable in VS Code, you can just take a look at all of this. Uh, you can, I believe you can even search for theme and it's going to give you a bunch of themes exactly. There we go. Winter is coming. Interesting. Uh, so here we have some font changes. So this is a, um, an easy way to play around with stuff is what I'm saying. A very easy way to just um, get your feet wet. I do not want this, sorry. I'm just gonna change back to my comfort. There we go. Okay, uh, these here are things that you don't really need to understand, so I'm just going to group them together. These here are um, external... Uh, you can uh, download them in extensions, but these are uh, extra add-on programs, you can say, that help you do certain things in VS Code. So, for example, I have a um, uh, Linux machine that's virtual on my computer, and here I've set up so that I can view those files and work in those files here in VS Code. So here's my computer, inside it is another computer, and I've linked that computer with the VS Code on the other computer. This is a real Russian doll situation and you're just gonna keep seeing the Russian doll theme throughout uh, programming, packaging things and having them within their own little boundaries and having them talk to each other. That's like a whole um, blanket statement you can do about coding and programming. But this remote explorer enables me to talk to my virtual machine. Um, so basically that is it. Um, this area here will be bigger when you start working with more and more files, um, timeline, uh, outline all of these things are going to fill up when you work with um, the, the files you're going to work with in the future and you don't need to know these things yet what you do need to know is how this looks what it means a little bit and you need to be comfortable enough to play it's very important that you feel like you can click around try things out um, and nothing bad is going to happen but uh, it's a really cool um, IDE. Uh, it's industry standard. It's it's 
pretty much what everyone uses. Some people use Visual Studio. I know that um, a lot of people who works, work in games use Visual Studio. There's uh, specific ones for different, um, uh, for different programming languages. Now, those are great, but one th the downside of them is that you get so much help that certain things that the IDE does for you, you forget and you take it for granted. And then if you go and work somewhere that uses VS Code, you might feel a bit stifled because the IDE isn't doing kind of a little bit of your job for you. But I'm gonna give you um, a little bit of a look around. So JetBrains is one, for example, there are so many, but one that um, develops other IDEs VS Code does not have a complete market uh, uh, monopoly. Um, and I do believe that we have WebStorm is for JavaScript. Um, we have Golan for Go. I believe we have IntelliJ IDEA. That's for JavaScript, uh, not for JavaScript, I'm sorry. That's for Java. Um, so all of these are specialized in a different language or a different way to, um, to code but highly encouraged and all of the examples, teachers are gonna be showing examples in VS Code and um, people kind of assume that you, you work in VS Code. But again, up to you. All right, thank you so much. This has been an initial look-see at VS Code. Um, have fun.